Hey guys, it's Hannes Nodamata here, and today is the 10th anniversary of Team Fortress 2 since its release. October 10th, 2007 is when it officially was released. And I thought to celebrate, I'd do something a bit special, something a bit unique, something a bit different, where I thought it'd be cool if me and a couple of my friends would share some of our favorite memories from Team Fortress 2, some things that just really made us love Team Fortress 2. I think it'd be a really cool, positive, retrospective kind of thing, so I encourage you to share some of your memories in the comments as well. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. One of my happiest memories of Team Fortress 2, probably to no surprise, is the release of the Pyromania update. I cannot tell you how absolutely thrilled I was when that was released. I'll go into further detail about it when I actually get to covering it on my TF2 History series, but my god, it just made my entire month. You see, it came out about midway through high school or so where, you know, everyone's a depressing teenager, but for me, that was my beacon, my light in the darkness, you know? I'll admit I wasn't exactly the most cheery, happy-go-lucky person in the world back then, but that almost completely flipped my life. I remember the anticipation just ripping me apart, and when the day finally came, first day I ever woke up that early, I swear, I woke up at like 6am, I was that excited. I, I immediately jumped out of bed uh, with no hesitation, got to the computer, and saw Meet the Pyro. The meet the last meet the video that was ever released because for those of you who don't know the meet the videos weren't all released at once they were released over several years and really long gaps between the last few and meet the pyro was the last one and that was where we discovered about pyro land and pyro vision was added to the game so much amazingly cool stuff and it was just one of the greatest times that i can can I, I can remember about Team Fortress 2. And I remember going to school and I found that normally in the morning at school where we all kind of met up before class, everyone was just so kind of blare, kind of monotone, you know, uh, you know, morning school blare. But me, for once, I was the happiest fucking guy there. I was so thrilled, I was so buzzed, and I kept... I remember telling all my friends and not a single one of them really gave a damn, but hot damn, I was just over the moon. And I was I would continue to be like that for the next month or so, playing it endlessly, every day, coming home from school, playing it from pretty much the moment I got home to, to bed. Fuck homework, man, this was way more important. But yeah, that's one of my most fond memories. One of my fondest memories of Team Fortress is getting my first ever cosmetic drop. I had only joined in May of 2013, um, so that was around the time of the Robotic Boogaloo update. Um, and, you know, I was playing for about half a year, you know, things like that, you know, getting weapons and stuff and crafting my own things, you know. The first, day, first thing I ever crafted was a quick fix, um, purely because I love Meet the Medic so much. But uh, I was playing around on a two fort server. Uh, you know, just doing, you know, two fort, you know what that's like. Uh, and I hit escape for some reason. And I was like, oh, I found a new item. That's that's pretty cool. Uh, let's uh, let's check it out. And up popped this, you found a Kringle collection. And I was like, oh, damn, that is some nice, nice shit right there. So I put it on and like, you know, you know how it comes up in the chat. Hey, you know, Overlord has found the Kringle collection. Um, and the whole server was going, hey, that's pretty good, well done, man, that's, that's really cool. And I put it on, and I was like, oh, man, that's, I'm so festive right now, you know, it's really cool. Um, and for like that brief five minutes, I was like the hero of the server, because I found something that was like, at the time, worth like a key. I think it was like, something around two dollars something, uh, USD, something like that. But yeah, that's, that's, that's one of my fondest memories of Team Fortress, finding my first ever cosmetic. Um... Yeah, it was it was pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. It's really cool. It's not really a big thing that I found I've enjoyed in TF2, but coming up with new weapon combos, well at least new for me, and trying them out and seeing if they work. Whether they do or not, you know, is a another fun thing in and of itself, but getting that Sandman with the cleaver combo for the first time without hearing it from someone else was, you know, a really cool thing to do. Something that I really liked learning. Hey there guys, Akira Sori here, and I was invited by Asno Tomato to add some of my more fondest memories of TF2. 
Now, I think I'll start things off with what I think is my most fondest memory, which would be when I actually first started playing TF2. Not on the PC, mind you. See, I started my Valve journey with the orange box for the Xbox 360. Back then, things were much simpler. The console version was much different than the PC version. Next to no uh, bug patches or any, any sort of that. Zero content updates. You had the vanilla maps, uh, Hydro, Dust Bowl, Two Fort, uh, Granary, and Well. You had your default weapons. You didn't have any cosmetics, no hats, no unusuals, no surprisingly no microtransactions. Now, when you look at other games that are on the 360, like Mass Effect 3 and all that, you think they would have hopped on board with Valve and been like, "Yeah, you know, what? just bring over the content, bring over the, your your store and whatnot." And we'll work out something, and we'll just make more money, because we're a, a huge company. But anyways... When I was playing on the, three, the, the 360 version, I didn't even know that the PC version had all, like... I think when I first found out that they had more items, this was already after... I think it was, was it the Pyre update that was the third update? I think it went heavy medic pyro. I could be wrong, and I know I'm, I, you know, I probably am wrong, but I, there was at least three class updates that came out um, when I had actually started listening to the podcast. And I was like, oh, well, this is pretty cool, but I don't have any money because I was like, what, 10, 12 at the time? So I decided to just stick with my Xbox friends and play the normal vanilla TF2, and I still loved it. You know, there's nothing to worry about, like, having the right stuff or anything. And you could just, back then, you could just hop into a full game of Dust Bowl, uh, Two Fort, Hydro. Oh, and Gravel. Gravel, Granary, Well. You could hop into any of those, and they'd almost always be, like, near full, almost full. Sometimes it'd be hard to get into lobbies back then. And you can just snap right in with your friends and enjoy one of your favorite maps. Up to, at that time, anyways. And, um, I, I, I kind of loved the old, like, the old glitchy feel when sometimes you'd see someone glitch out of the skybox and they'd be hovering over the point in Dust Bowl with their sentry gun hidden in the building, and then you one-up them by knowing how the glitch works, so you go up there and, uh, and you get rid of their stuff, and then you feel very accomplished for it. Um, but then eventually... Uh, I'm glad that I moved to the PC version with my closer friends, like I asked no tomato, um, to experience the full package. And really, I wish that time zones weren't such a pain in the backside so I'd actually play TF2 again with my friends. Another extremely fond memory that I have related to Team Fortress 2 is sort of less about Team Fortress 2, but more just a kind of really nice moment I had with a friend of mine. So, once again, going back to high school days, um, there was one night where me and a couple of my friends were playing Team Fortress 2. I believe that they were Seb, Ben, and Frank. Now, I was upset about something. I wasn't talking about it or anything like that. I just, something happened and I wasn't feeling it. That's why I just wanted to play Team Fortress 2. Just get my mind off the world that was just really not accommodating to me at that time and just wanted to play Team Fortress 2. That's all I wanted to do. So we played for a little while, and as the night went on, it being a school night and that, both Frank and Ben eventually signed off. But I was not having it. I was really just not in the mood for any kind of normal conventions of going to bed on time and waking up early for school the next day. I just was in such a mood. Once again, I never said anything, and I just acted as normal. I just, you know, well other than the fact that I probably wasn't talking as much. But, um, and Seb said he probably should go soon as well. I was like, okay. But I wasn't going to stop playing. We were playing on 2 Fort, and even the server was starting to die down a bit at that time. But Seb decided to stay. And we continued to keep playing. Even if it was just him and me on the server. Up until about 4 a.m. Now, it's not necessarily something we have ever spoken about before or afterwards of that matter 
and I don't even know if he really knew, but I felt like it was some kind of like a weird, I don't know, bond between us of that he could sense in a way that maybe I was just having a bad time and that, I don't know, it was just really nice to just kind of play a game with a friend. Like I said, we weren't talking about anything, we were just playing the game, pirate sharking each other, you know, going back and forth. And we were up until about 4 a.m. Until eventually I was the one who said, I think I'll go to bed now. I don't know. It's a kind of weird memory, but it's a really special one to me. It was an interesting bonding moment with a friend of mine, and it was with, through me playing Team Fortress 2, so... Yeah, that's a really, really fond memory of mine. I'm glad I got to share it. So after a few years of playing Team Fortress, I was like, okay, uh, I think I'm I think I'm about ready to spend some money on this project. You know, because, you know, beforehand I was like, oh, you know, kind of... Well, I wasn't free to play, I bought the game as part of the orange box, but, you know, I never really bought anything from the store. Like, I, I never got a key, never uncrated anything. So, you know, but, like, I had collected all these crates, and, like, you know, I was there, you know, I got some summer claim checks, I got some uh, robo crates from the Robotic Boogaloo update, I got, um, you know, and you're just, you're just regular crates. I was like, okay, um, it's, it's about time I unbox something. I thought to myself, and I was like, oh yeah, so I bought uh, five keys, three robotic boogaloo keys, and I bought two regular ones, and I was like, okay, so the first thing I'm ever going to unbox is going to be a robo crate, and I was, I was really happy, I was like, okay, let's do this, I'm so excited, let's do it, and I uh, clicked on the buttons to, you know, uncrate this, and, you know, it's like, you, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Um... And I unboxed a Mecha Meaty. Now, for those of you who don't know, I am a massive Medic fan. So to get a Mecha Meaty was just, was just awesome. I remember uh, messaging uh, Liam about it. And I was like, holy shit, dude, look what I've got. Oh, it's so good. Oh, look at this. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. It was, it was really incredible to get uh, um, something that I really wanted. Uh, something, something like a Mecha Meaty. Um, yeah, just <laughs> really awesome moment for me. Another really fun thing about TF2 is just how balls to the wall it can be at times, especially when you're traveling around with a big group of mates, and it being a free game and all, it's pretty easy to get going. And once once you're in the lobby with, you know, four or five guys all having, having a fun time chatting with each other, trying to get those you know, strats or coordinated plays, it, it can be a really enjoyable experience. Moving on from that bit of rambling to my next point, these are more coherent points now, would be when I unboxed my first, and so far my only unusual hat. It was a snowy, towering pillar of hats that I renamed to something like the towering pile of chills and snow, I think. Um, I was so surprised and happy to have it because not only was it an all class, it was on a pretty cool hat, and it was doing a pretty cool effect. I mean, it's a good thing it wasn't like a, a crappy, I can't think of one right now, but a crappy class specific with like stinky fly effect. Like that, that would pretty be pretty shitty. Um, but yeah, uh, unfortunately it's no longer with me. It saddens me that I did eventually sell it because I felt like I wouldn't be playing anymore. Seeing as how I hadn't played a game with friends in like over a year, and everyone was, most of my friends were talking about how boring it was getting, although I think that was due to just us not ever playing it as a big group, because I think that makes it way more fun. Um, so eventually, yeah, I ended up selling it for around 90 bucks, which basically paid for all the keys I bought to get it, and then some afterwards, which then I used to buy stuff like CSGO, which I kind of regret, because... I wasn't able to play with friends, so it was really not that worth it. And some other games I can't think of right now. Do I miss it? Of course I miss it. It was unusual. It was a cool unusual. Uh, I loved putting on my sniper and then not understanding how people couldn't snipe me even though my head was below this giant cloud of snow, so it made it a much bigger target, but, you know, whatever. But I feel like it was a fair deal. I feel like it didn't get ripped off. And it, at the end of the day, it's a pile of cosmetic pixels, and I got 90 bucks for it. I don't know if my, I've mentioned this on Liam's channel before, but my playground in Team Fortress is uh, Ghost Town. So that's uh, Wave 666 in, like, Man vs. Machine. Um, 
which is a really, really intense game mode. Uh, only for the, like, the... I get you wouldn't call them the elite, but the, the more practiced of uh, MVM players. And so I, I started getting into it because I found this server once and I was like, oh yeah, how's it going? You know, started playing and it's like, oh geez, this is intense. But you know, as with everything, over time you get better and better. So um, no one ever really played a scout. So I, ha I had a couple of group people I played with, and you know, they were like, they were obscenely good. Like, really good. And for those, like, if any of you watching, you know, shout out to you guys. Um, and I started to play Scout, you know, because, you know, we need the money. In, in something like that, you, you do start off with five grand in cash, but you need the money for, like, for other upgrades and stuff. You, you need it to complete it. And it's like, okay. So I started playing Scout and collecting money. And, you know, as I said before, you keep playing and you get better and better. And, Eventually, I got to the point where it was like, okay, I would only miss um, credits within the single digit. So I'd miss like maybe maybe six credits or four or, you know, most of the time I'd miss two. And I was like, oh, I was ripping my hair out at that point because I was like, oh, no, I need I, I need to collect all the money. <laughs> uh, you know, people, you know, making jokes like, oh, you know, kick the scout. He didn't collect all the money. <laughs> um, it was really fun, you know. Um, but there was this one time, and I remember very, very clearly. Um, the the match was super intense, and you know, spies everywhere. There's a particular spy wave where the spies just pop out of nowhere, and especially if you've got a pyro, the spies will run off and die, and they'll leave the the money where they are, um, where they died. But that could be halfway across the map. So I was running around this map. It was so intense trying to pick up all this cash, um, and we got to the end of it. We killed the last heavy medic pair. And we got the little, we got the little, the little A plus, the little A plus popped up. And I was like, holy shit, I've done it. I, I've totally done it. I've, I've, I've got an A plus on, on wave 666. This is it. This is, this is the pinnacle of my career. <laughs> this is it. And that was back in 2015. That was, you know, that was a while ago now. Um, yeah, it was just an incredible moment, and, you know, ever since then, I, like, I've, I've got it a few more times, um, but yeah, it, it, it's always been, like, it's either been nail-bitingly close, those few times you get it, or, like, we've completed it, and it's just, like, you get a C credit, like, you are so way off the mark that, you know, you might as well, like, like the announcer says, you know, retire now, you know, <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was a great moment. Really, really satisfying. Now, instead of rambling on about general stuff, like how much fun in general it was to play with friends, uh, back uh, back before I moved to the USA and started being time zoned, there's a strange weapon that I found that I will never get rid of. When I finally unboxed it, and I got my strange home wrecker, which I called Sap Spy and Sentry Remover. People called me crazy when I'd run around two forts swinging this bad boy around and killing people, even with his damage penalty, but crits are skill, man. You get crits, you get kills, you feel accomplished. But not only that. Not only did, by George, did I get almost 250 kills, and take in mind this is... I got near the end of me playing TF2... I play it on and off now, but without any friends, so it's like one round of two for it, one round of Dust Bowl, something like that. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about the 200, around the 250 kills. And I've also decked it out with strange parts, like Cloak's Spy's killed at 30, Buildings destroyed at 73, and Sappers removed at 64. Now I'm not sure if the Sappers were already there, seeing as kind of should be built into the homebreak, because that's what it does, but... I'm not, it could be a strange part for, like, the wrenches that you can also put on the homework, I'm not sure. Um, and also, I eventually put all my, like, trading card money from taking all my trading cards and selling them off for, like, 14 cents, 7 cents, 21 cents if I got lucky. Eventually amassing the parts I needed to create a uh, professional uh, kill streaker. I think it's professional. It might have been the second tier. But uh, it gave me the... Uh, tornado Sheen Mean Green Killstreaker for my home wrecker, and 
you now granted usually I don't actually get kill streaks with this weapon, but when I do manage to get kill streaks with this weapon, killing cloak spies in the process and doing what I love to call playing an NG pyro where I babysit my NG's nest and keep the pesky spies away, it is always nice to have that nice bright green glow on this uh, sledgehammer to show people that it's your baby. Well, it's my baby. And you're not messing with my baby. And finally today, guys, I want to tell you one story, which is probably my darkest moment in Team Fortress 2, and also one of my brightest. It is the story of my Max's severed head. Now, for those of you who don't know somehow, Max's severed head is one of the rarest and most sought after hats in the game, or at least one of the most expensive. The reason for that is it was only available during a limited time promotion for the new series of Sam and Max, and this was years and years ago. Now, back in the day, I was so into Team Fortress 2 that I gave in to all of these promotions. If there was like, there's a game coming out and you get TF2 items, I would buy that game, regardless of if I was interested or not. Luckily, it turned out that Sam and Max would happen to be one of my favorite franchises, and probably the music that you're listening to right now is from Sam and Max, but that's regardless. So I actually owned my own genuine Max's severed head. Another friend of mine got it as well, and that would be Sebastian again. Now, here's the thing. The TF2 trading market and stuff like that was still kind of being created. It was definitely there, and it was definitely like in full force, but it hadn't quite, you know, gotten to the level that we're at now, you know, in fact, nowhere near, really, you know, keys were worth, like, way more, and things like that, it, you know, the, the economy was just a wild place, right, and I wasn't keeping up with it, admittedly. One of the things that was recently added into the game, I think, probably a couple major updates ago at this point, was unusual items. Now, I know nowadays most of the pros all have unusual hats, but back in the day they were something special. They were really, really special. Uh, only a handful of people really had unusual hats. I mean, obviously the number was growing at this point, but you know, I'm just trying to give, paint you a picture where we were. They weren't the rarest thing in the world, but they kind of were. You know, they were a big deal. I'm pretty sure this was still around the first two or three se uh, series for sure. Um, uh, so yeah. Now, I want an unusual hat, because who the hell doesn't, right? Any unusual will do. Any at all, <laughs> is what I said. Um, because I just wanted to have an unusual hat. I was like, I play TF2 so much, I deserve one. You know, I need one. I need an unusual hat. So I go on to trading servers every now and then, generally to fuck around, but occasionally to actually do some trades here and there. Back in the day, the trading system was way different as well. It was much snappier, and people just did it back and forth because, you know, they could, rather than actual thinking it through. But, like I said, there was a market and an economy slowly growing in the background, uh, unknowns to me. One day, I am approached by a man. <laughs> Some man, I don't know. All I remember that it was in-game, he was the scout, so... And he said to me, what do you want for your Max's severed head? Now here's the thing. If you couldn't already tell, I had no idea about the economy. And to me, Max's severed head, although it was a fr I, knew, I was aware that it was a rare item, I had no fucking clue how rare and expensive it was. Now it wasn't as rare and expensive as it is now, but it still was quite up there. I had no clue. No clue whatsoever that the hat that I had was pretty much the equivalent to an unusual. And I was like, oh, I don't know. And he offered, and he offered me an unusual. Now to me, I was like, this fucking sucker, he just wants Max's severed head for an unusual? Pah, I can easily get another Max's severed head. So I made the trade. The trade, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this, it was for a masked flies batter's helmet. Which, at the time, as you might imagine, I was thrilled about. I was like, I have an unusual hat! Oh my god, it's the greatest thing ever! But, I soon realized, wanting to show it off to people in the servers, that literally no one noticed. 
For those of you who don't know, mass flies is probably among the hardest unusuals to see. Now it's funny because nowadays mass flies are much more sought after because of its kind of terrible status and the fact that it was from series 1. But back then, there only pretty much being one series, it was just shit tier. No one would notice you even had an unusual, and if they did, who really cares? You got flies going around your helmet. It's literally <laughs> as if you pulled it out of the trash. I remember thinking maybe I could increase the value of it or something like that by craft crafting into a bonk helm. I didn't do that because it would turn out if I did that, I would have completely lost the unusual effect. But yeah, it wasn't too long before I started really regretting my decision and decided, you know what, I would like to sell this for Max's severed head. And so followed months and months of me going to several trading uh, servers attempting my very best to sell this hat for a Max's severed head to no avail. Eventually I did end up selling the hat itself for I believe like a shit ton of metal uh, just because like I just didn't care for it or maybe it was another hat that I wanted I honestly can't remember that was beside the point because for what I had gained I didn't care for as much for what I lost eventually as you might imagine by asking people and talking to people and trying to get a Max's severed head I began to realize the true value of what I had lost completely unaware that I had lost <laughs> one of the most valuable items in the game my very own it really sucked. It really, really did. Unfortunately, I would have absolutely zero success in obtaining another Max's Severed Head for about three years, it would be. If you watched my videos within those three years, you might have noticed even, in fact, that in my hat collection, in my inventory, there was always a space completely blank. A weird, out-of-place space where my Max's Severed Head once sat. And I kept that space open as a reminder, as a reminder to not make that stupid, stupid mistake. To do your research, to know the value of what you're selling, to not give away something you'll regret. Fortunately though, this does have a happy ending. And to be honest, it's quite a simple one. As I previously mentioned, Sebastian, uh, also had this hat and as you might imagine he wasn't exactly willing to just give it over to me but eventually he was because well he was no longer really into playing team fortress 2 he was sort of giving up his account and just sort of you know didn't really much care for it anymore and so i asked him do you think i could grab that max's severed head if you're not planning on using it and he said sure and as soon as I got it, I made this video. The greatest day of my life. Where I flaunted about on an unusual server showing how I had finally gotten back Max's severed head. And from that day forth, every single time I got a trade request for my Max's severed head, they would be instantly declined. I'm sorry folks, I am never ever giving it away. Ever. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of my both darkest and one of my greatest moments in Team Fortress 2. <laughs> it's a kind of ridiculous story, but I think it has an interesting arc. Anyway guys, that has done it for our little uh, Team Fortress 2 10 year anniversary video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and hey, if you guys have any stories at all that you guys want to share, please leave them in the comments. I look forward to reading them. Anyway, I've been Aizno Damato, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Liam is gay.